Welcome to Good Morning Belfast, community television show. Join us now to celebrate the good life in Belfast and Waldo County. We're on Belfast Community TV and Camden Rockland Main Coast TV. You can also find us on the internet at www.goodmorningbelfast.com. So stay tuned and be informed, entertained, educated, and inspired. Good morning, Belfast. Hey, everybody. This is George Frangoulis, and I'm here with my flower of a bride and co-host, Kristen Frangoulis. And thank you all for tuning in and watching the show today. We're going to have a great show. We've got some wonderful and wonderfully interesting guests lined up today. And my segment called Village Voices, talking with leaders and luminaries of Belfast, we are featuring Mike Hurley, and he's talk, going to be talking about developing the waterfront for mixed usage. And he also has brought along with him a five-minute video that Ned Leitner has uh, produced, and um, it's very informative. And I, I can't wait uh, for us all to see that. Hey, George Frangoulis, and I'm with my very special guest, Belfast City Councilor. Michael Hurley. Good morning, Michael. Glad to have you aboard. Good morning, aboard. George. Thanks for having me on board. This is Good Morning Belfast. It's some good morning, folks Belfast. are wa watching us in the afternoon and some yeah. folks are watching us at night. Three in the morning. Well, I don't know about three in the morning, but uh, anyway. So we're, in a few minutes, in a minute or two, we're going to watch a video that you asked uh, Ned Leitner to make for this particular segment of our show. This segment is called Village Voices. Village Voices is where we uh, chat with local leaders and luminaries about, did that make you uncomfortable, leaders and luminaries? I think that's a stretch, but go ahead. The luminary <laughs> part of it. Well, you've been a city councilor for a long time. You're an entrepreneur and um, rock on tour. I know you don't like to be called a rock on tour. Maybe you do. Anyway. So what we're going to talk about today is what? Belfast Yards. And uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, the city council, well, let me just describe Belfast Yards. So Belfast Yards is the property when you're walking along the harbor, for, uh, on the harbor walk. We have a video that's going to show Yeah, that. yeah, but we've got to tell people anyway. Okay, so ahead, it's the ahead. space between the Front Street Pub and Front Street Shipyard. Right now it's an empty, empty lot. We call it Belfast Yards because... It's where the Belfast and Moosehead Lake Railroad used to be. Their old freight and terminal office uh, became the Belfast Maskers Theater. That had to be torn down because it was just falling apart and rotting. And now it's sitting there empty. And uh, all along, the city has been determined to make it into a mixed use. And when I say the city, I want to say I'm here, I'm an individual city councilor. I'm not the king of Belfast. Uh, uh, if I could, I would wave my uh, magic wand. Uh, but uh, I am speaking as one city councilor. I'm reflecting current city positions uh, that uh, all city councilors going back, even when we tore down the building, uh, originally was, let's make this a mixed use space uh, that reflects what downtown Belfast is like. And I'm going to talk later about uh, how much uh, the waterfront is. Right now you have Penobscot McCrum, Front Street Shipyard, a very small group like Three Tides and uh, Out on a Win uh, Purple Baboon and Nautilus. Then you have Park, Waterfront, uh, Paul Naren's property, bought French and Webb and uh, Consumers and then another park, the Boathouse, and that is it for the Belfast waterfront. There are three, basically three private owners who own the okay. almost all of the Belfast waterfront. We want smaller private individual let owners me, down there. Let me say that we should watch your video, hmm. Ned's video, which describes, again, what you've just told us. But sure. in pictures, as well as words, I think it will give our viewers a wonderful chance to um, understand the situation and when we come back let's go to how we make this happen okay so 
Everybody hears about Belfast Yards, but they're not really quite sure what it is. So it's right here behind me, and it's a weird anvil-shaped kind of property. It's longer on the Harbor Walk, shorter on Front Street, and it's got things like this. It runs from this big building you can see on the left here, the Front Street Shipyard Green Building, and it runs all the way over to the uh, Front Street Pub, and the Harbor Walk restaurant, and it's, uh, uh, but they've got a, a nice driveway in there, so it doesn't run right up to their building. There's a driveway, sidewalk. We're gonna go down and take a look at it, do some measure, show you some where it is. So, as you can see, this is an odd shaped building. This is where the Belfast Maskers building used to be, or where the, uh, in the back in the day, it was the Belfast Moosehead Lake Railroad Terminal. But it is a weird shape, so I want to kind of give you some ideas how long. Here we are standing along Front Street on this sidewalk. It's 360 feet long, roughly, from here to uh, Front Street Pub. It's only about 200, no, it's only about 100 feet long wide here. It's 480 feet long all the way down along the Harbor Walk. And that is, by the way, giving it room for this driveway and for a driveway for uh, uh, alongside the uh, Front Street Shipyard building. And then that length of that is about 200 feet. So it's not a nice square little rectangle. Uh, it's not a uh, uh, little, but it's uh, completely workable. If you think things don't work, take a look at the uh, what's now Undyne. Uh, the restaurant on the corner where the Gothic, the old Republican Journal, the old shoe store, you know, very odd little shaped building and yet very unique uh, and interesting to Belfast. So this is a total of about 2,800 square feet and later we're going to get into, well, what fits in there? What, what, what would fit there? And, uh, and we got a lot of great ideas so we're going to share them with you. So here is the entire city of Belfast waterfront that is for commercial development. Here's the big bridge. This is Penobscot McCrum. There's the walking bridge. Here's Front Street Shipyard. There's that big green building right there. We were up here when we filmed down. This is in the parking lot there behind Main Street. And there you have, uh, you know, this is the tugboat building. Here's Nautilus, the old weather vane. Uh, city boat, you know, this is our landing here, Heritage Park, uh, French and wet, this is the old consumers building, now Paul Naren's building, here's the uh, French and Webb building, the old Matthews Brothers uh, building, there is the old Matthews Brothers, now Belfast Farmers Market, here's Her uh, Steamboat Landing, and uh, there is the Belfast Boathouse, and that is the entire Belfast waterfront. Uh, and what I'm going to say about it is, this is owned by one person or one company. This is owned by one company. The city owns this little piece. This is, again, a very small, all small businesses. Now you have city and park. Then you have one owner, and that is, and then city park and that's it. That's the entire city of Belfast waterfront. Three owners own maybe 80, 90 percent of the uh, available commercial space in the city of Belfast waterfront. So what, what could fit on the Belfast Yards property? So here are some very easily recognized buildings in Belfast. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six buildings they would fit no problem right along Front Street. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten buildings, all again very easily recognized. They could fit right along the Harbor Walk and they don't take up a very, they're not really deep stores. Obviously it's, you know, they'd have to be worked, but this idea of mixed use retail or restaurants or whatever like that on the first floor offices and apartments. Think of who's upstairs in these buildings. You know, who is upstairs on the second floor, the third floor, etc. Uh, you have 
people working, people living, people doing office work, people having shops. And uh, so when we talk about mixed use, now we're not talking about buildings that look like this, but we're talking about that kind of mixed use. Hey, we're back. I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. It was very informative, I thought. Um, and uh, I, I, I'd like now for Mike to uh, kind of expand upon what we've just seen. He talked about this oddly shaped 2,800 square foot piece of property that could accommodate lots of different mixed use buildings and retail and apartments. So our folks have seen the video. Go for it. So here we are sitting upstairs on the second floor of uh, the old professor bookshop in what people would readily say we love about Belfast. Small buildings owned by local people with businesses on the ground floor, apartments and offices on the second and third floor. And meanwhile, down on the Belfast waterfront, there is, you can count how many apartments, how many people live on one hand. There is nothing but a potato plant, a shipyard, and right now as an undeveloped uh, consumers and uh, uh, whatever, uh, front, French and web. So I want to say we want to recreate what people love about Belfast down on the Belfast waterfront and bring small individual mixed use uh, shops, restaurants, uh, you name it, apartments, offices, and make that part of uh, along the Harbor Walk. Uh, that is our goal. What we've done to date is... Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay. Whose goal? So far, that's the stated goal of the Belfast, City of Belfast and the City Council and City Councilors, and uh, that's, that's well, their here's goal. Here's my question. Is it build it and they will come? But they're already here. No, no, it's not, unfortunately. Uh, so how do we make this happen? So how do you make it happen is, number one, you get some visualization. So we hired a, uh, a WBRC architects and engineers to what could fit, how would it fit on this property? Uh, but ultimately, and uh, we're doing this right now, we just voted to go ahead and do a market analysis so that we can then invite people. Uh, the, the, the big argument is going to be, do you have one developer do this whole thing or do you have many small organic, uh, and that's going to be the debate. Uh, I personally, uh, you know, I, I do not as yet have a popular support for the position. I'd rather see it happen organically with individual owners, much as downtown Belfast has developed. Uh, Is this property uh, subdivided? Can I go out, go down not, there and buy no, a... Not yet. I can't. No, no. And we're not even there yet. So, plus why I'm doing this show is, it's really, when you say, who's we, we don't have this, this is not out in the air yet of the, of the community. So we need people to get engaged and think about this and think about it before, uh, you know, while the debate is going on, before we make decisions that uh, they're, they're going to want to be involved in. So I, I want to say again, because it's very important, I am not speaking as, the, as if this is something that's a done deal or that it's finished or that the idea is completely gelled. How we get to this is what we are doing now. We're still doing the exploratory phase. We've talked to people who are builders who are interested in this. We've talked to a smaller, bigger, and uh, a lot of this is going to uh, uh, gel as we go forward. I want to say one thing about parking, which is a really big deal, because people say, oh, well, where is everybody going to park? Well, first off, when we redeveloped Front Street, we made it into a long parking lot. There are parking places all along Front yeah. Street. So we're not going to focus uh, the city on parking as much because car usage uh, is going to be changing radically in the next few years. Mm -hmm. And whatever we used to do about thinking about parking, it's going to change. What... Uh I, I like your idea for the organic, the small, bunch of small folks building individual uh, businesses and buildings rather than one big developer, only because it gives p some variety to the architecture, I think, and usage. However, what would be a worst case scenario? Would you, a big developer coming in with a big commercial 
plant of some kind. That would take that space and just... Yeah. Key to us is small, private, individual ownership. I like so that. So even if it's a individual developer, they would have to provide that. They're, we're not going to have one more king of the Belfast waterfront. Okay. That, I think, everybody agrees on. Yeah. And so small, private, individual ownership. And uh, I think that's really critical. By the way, you said 2,800 feet. It's 28,000 square feet. Hey, Still not I that big. I was quoting you, man. I watched the video. Did I say 2,800? <laughs> yes, you did. Anyway, thanks. It's been great talking about Belfast Yards. And please pay attention. Go down and take a look at it. If, if I misquoted you, I apologize. No big if deal. it's 28,000 square Nobody feet. knows the difference anyway. But. Well, I don't, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Mike, thank you very much for coming aboard and talking about this and keep us up to date on this. I will. Thank you for uh, talking about it. It's a big deal. Uh, I, wanna, I think what we want to do is recolonize the Belfast waterfront, which traditionally was an industrial work site, into bring people back down there, living there, working there, having their businesses there, just like they do everywhere in the I rest hope that of town. happens, and I hope it happens real fast. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks.